In this video, I'll be running you through some of the basics you need to get started on Fusion 360. First thing you need to know is how to create a new project, which once you've opened up Fusion 360, on the left hand side you should see something similar to this, where it says new project, so click on there, and just give it a name. So if you're doing Unit 16 for BTEC, or if you're doing R107 for Cambridge Nationals, best to just call it that, but if you're just doing a fun project, give it any name you like. I'm going to do this as DPI Tests. Once it's created that and saved it, double click on there, it'll open it up. Now I can create a new folder if I want, or I can just create a new document. So the next thing we need to understand is, if I want to create a folder in here that I can save different parts of my work to, so for example, I might want to create a folder for year 12, and then a folder for year 10. Then inside the year 10, I might want to create a new document. So then I go to new design, and it will open up a new window, it will be untitled. You might find that it won't allow you to save this document until you've actually put data into it, since you've created a, an object or something like that. So don't panic if you try and save it straight away and it won't work. Just do some work and then save it. So now that we've got our document, what we want to be able to do is to start working towards creating objects like this. One of the ways you want to do that is by creating separate files for each of these objects or creating each object as a different component within the same file. Now I find it far easier to create separate files for each component and then bring them all together in a separate new design later on when I want to do an assembly drawing. But some people just get carried away and start drawing loads of stuff on the same file, which is fine, but just don't draw the same thing on top of each other and then expect to explode it later on. It's a lot harder to do if you want to then separate this out later on than if, well, it's a lot harder to do if you want to separate it out later on and you've drawn it all as one piece, because then you've got to start cutting it up and drawing in extra details. If you draw these all as separate things to start with in separate files, all you have to do is drag all the things from the different files into one new file and then you can play around with it there. So here we're going to create just a simple object. Now you'll see that this is just a blank screen. It does actually have a grid in the background. What we'll need to do is to go to Visual Style, make sure it's on Shady with Hidden Edges, go to Grid, Layout Grid, and now we can see what you will need to be able to use to measure all the things on the screen. So once we've got that, we can now look at using these different axes to complete our work. As you can see, when I do this with the Orbit tool, let's me move around. This is the base, so you've got your X, Y axis and your Z going up. In order to draw something, what we need to do is to go to here and create a sketch. When we click on that, it asks us to choose one of these planes to draw on, so it becomes a two-dimensional view of that plane. To start with, it will only give you the x, y, z, x, and so on axes. You can actually type it in to choose one, but you tend to just click on these on your first drawing. So if I want to put it on the floor, so to speak, on the surface, I'd put it there. If I want to put it so that it's facing me, as you can see, this is the front, so that would be the front face. And if I want to draw it so that I'm looking at it from the left or the right, I would do it there. As you can see over here, this is left or right. If you wish to change your view of the planes, you can always pick up this little cube over here, move it around, and it tells you what the axes are and where the top and bottom are. So you can see the blue is the Z, green is the Y, and the red is the X. So I want to draw it face on from the front. So I'm going to click on this plane here, and I'm going to draw a simple circle. So to do that, I just click on the Create the circle. If I want to see any of these options, I go to the drop down menu and then I can just click on these. Now, if you double, if you right click on these, I believe, oh, the wrong one, one sec, go down. When you go to a tool, if you go to this option here, you can actually pin it to your toolbar. So if you find that you're using the same tool over and over and over again, and you don't have to keep coming down to these options, when you go to the tool, go to this little option button here, and then you can actually create a shortcut key as well. So you can customize Fusion to do whatever you want. But for now, we're just gonna draw a circle. So we click on the screen, you can see it's jumping to the grid, and I'm asking it to do that here. 
Oh, am I? Down here. Yeah, snap to grid. If you don't like it snapping to the grid, you can turn that off. If I want to see the grid in more detail, I just zoom in and out. As you can see, it tells you what the distance from your zero point here is. So now click on the grid, drag it along. If I want a specific dimension, I can type that straight in. So I want it to be a diameter of 20. So type in 20, push return. Everything's in millimeters. We can change that if we want. So I've got a 20 millimeter diameter 2D drawing, 2D sketch. If I want to add anything else into that, say a central circle here, I can do. I can do that at 10. So now I've got two overlapping ones. I can always add a rectangle in. Don't know what I'm drawing yet, but we'll see. There. So I've drawn some bits, finished my sketch, and now on the screen you can see I've got all these different parts. Now you can see where they intersect, it's creating specific geometry, specific shapes. So now I can use the orbit tool to go back to a three dimensional tool, and you can see it's just completely flat, it has no thickness. What I want to be able to do now is use the extrude tool to add thickness to some of these parts. So what I want to do is I want to extrude this section, this section, and this section to create a hollow cylindrical object with a sort of rectangular additional part on the top. So if I click on here, and then also click on here, you can see this profile changes to two selected objects, three selected objects. If I accidentally select the middle section, I can cancel the selection and go again, or I can click on it again, no, oh, that didn't work. So that's the whole thing and add those in. Now I can type in the distance I want to extrude it or I can just drag it. So I can pick it up and pull it along to extrude it or I can type it in. But before we do any of that, we need to look down here and understand that there are lots of different options available to you. You can actually do it two sides. So you can do it from both sides at the same time. You can do it so that it's symmetrical, whichever one you pull it one way, it goes out the other. You can also taper some of the angles. You can do it so that it creates a new component. You can do it so it creates a new body. You can also do it so it cuts or intersects other objects. So if you're stuck and you want the program to do something specific, double check these options down here. You might find that you can actually do it already. You just didn't realize. So for now, we want it to be one-sided. We want it to be 10. Go over here. Type in 10, and there we have it. I have a very simple object, which is the shape I wanted. Now, let's say I wanted to put a hole in this face here. I create a new sketch. Now, instead of drawing it on this plane, which is on this red line along there, I actually want to draw it straight onto this face here. So if we look, This face is beyond that red line. So instead of using these parts here, if I cancel my sketch, if I go to Construct Offset Plane, I can click on that surface and it will ask me what distance I want to offset it from that surface. Now, if I want it exactly on the surface, I leave it at zero. If I want it to be offset by a specific amount outside the surface, so beyond it, not touching it, I can just type in whatever number I want, but if I want it offset inside, so I want it to go into the object, I just do it as a minus and it will go back in. So wherever you need that plane to sit before you start drawing, that's what you would type into this box here. But for now, I just want it on the surface. I then go to sketch, click on that plane. If you ever need to find your planes, they're here under construction. So all the planes you create during your modeling will be down here, so you can always click on them to work on those. One of the things I would say though is that the center point, the zero point does change. So if you're struggling to find an exact point you want here, you can actually put in construction lines. So instead of drawing a normal line that would then be able to be interacted with, you can draw a construction line and just say, right, I want to find out what five mil is in from here. So you do that, push five, and the end of that will be right there. And so then what you could do is say, right, I know that's five, and I want to come six and a half down, so 6.5. Then that tells you that that point there is where you want to put your circle. So now I create a circle, I take off the construction option, and I want that to be 
four millimeters and I finish my sketch. And now you'll see these exist. You can always go back into that sketch and delete these construction lines if you want, but they won't show up in your final model. I can then extrude this. I'm going to go to cut. And then when I pull it into the object, you see it goes red. And if I want to, I can do it exactly so that I know the thickness of this object was 10, I believe. We'll just do that. Oh, why is it? There we go. I have to push escape to get out of the orbit tool. So go to 10, and you can see it goes exactly from the start to the end, or front to back most people would say, of the object. Then cut, and now I have that hole. And there are more things you can do, like you can create a thread inside there, you can add extra parts. So again, you can draw a section here and add it to it. But as a basic principle, those are the pretty much standard tools you'll need to start with. Once you're happy with it, press save, give it a name, and save it. You can always go back in. Now you'll see, as you save this over time, we get different versions appear here and there. So if you make a mistake, you can go back and look at the different versions. But you can also save it as a new part. So what I tend to do is, if I'm not sure about what I'm doing next, I can copy this, and then create another copy in there. Give it a new name. And I can open this one up, play around with that to my heart's content if it's correct, brilliant. If it's not, I've always got an older version of that here. But there you go, you should be able to go in now and have a fiddle with Fusion. See how you get on.